And we're also joined from London by the I-24 News correspondent there, Jonathan Sakardati. Hi, Jonathan. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. So what's the latest, uh, I mean, outside your window, I don't know if there's flooding in London, of course, uh, but what's the latest that you're hearing? Well, here in London, we've been pretty lucky, actually, seeing all these uh, terrible images. Uh, we've been relatively unscathed by the extreme weather. Uh, but as you heard in the report there, 5,000 more troops on standby, more rain expected, and 16 flood warnings still active. So while water is being pumped out of flooded areas, more, uh, it won't really help as there's going to be more rain. And so it's uh, fighting something of a losing battle against the, the natural forces of the weather. And we've seen the Prime Minister, David Cameron, uh, do his kind of uh, rounds around uh, the, the affected areas. Has the government been given any uh, recommendations, warnings to citizens? Well, at this stage, uh, David Cameron made it clear already during a, a press conference a few days ago that no expense would be spared, that money was no object in the relief effort. But of course, political capital has been made from that with Ed Miliband asking exactly what that means and what right. that meant about the redundancies in the Environment Agency, which he said would in fact have an effect on the UK's ability to withstand future weather conditions like this. So political capital will be made from these events, as is always the case. Uh, but in the meantime, the army is out in force. And we even saw Princes William and Harry uh, lending a hand in uh, Datchet a few days ago to help uh, move sandbags and help people who needed uh, relief in the floods. So there is a, a stiff upper lip that's got being uh, put on these things. And also, uh, the government has said that it will do what it needs to to help people. So whether that comes through or not remains to be seen. And yes, I mean, of course, uh, as Jonathan said, through natural disasters, always the politics kind of seeps through. And, and England is, is not uh, a stranger to that. Of course, exactly. Ed Miliband is being very uh, rhetorically uh, loud, I would say, mm -hmm. and taking it to uh, a very political side. Yes, exactly. What he's doing is he's basically using the opportunity to come up with, um, to basically point out the um, problems within the coalition governments. So on one hand, you have the Lib Dems, who are very pro taxes upon oil and gas companies, renewable energy sources, and you know very pro um, believing in climate change and taking measures to prevent it. And you also have more kind of hardline, old school Tory elements within the coalition who are against that. So that's right. what he's referring to when he's saying that we're sleepwalking into a disaster because he's trying to uh, weaken Cameron by point out the lack of unity in the government. And he's using. A and I want to ask you, Jonathan, is Cameron going to leave this unscathed? Is this popularity going to be affected by uh, the response of the government? Who can know? Of course, Ed Miliband is hoping not. And uh, for a politician who's found it very difficult throughout his time as the leader of the Labour Party to actually gain a uh, place in the nation's hearts, I suppose he'll be hoping that this is uh, the particular thing that pulls him through and that makes him look like a powerful leader who's strong on climate change. But of course, climate change is, as you say, one of these hot political potatoes, which comes up again and again, especially at times like this. And there are voices weighing in on either side. Uh, just uh, this week, a senior advisor for the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, Professor Matt Collins, pointed out that this particular extreme weather was driven by the jet stream, the high-speed current of air that girdles the globe. And he says that that has nothing to do with global warming. There's no evidence that that jet stream can get stuck in the way it has this winter. And if that's due to climate change, it's outside our knowledge. So you've got politicians and experts uh, and, of course, lots of armchair meteorologists now weighing in on why they think this extreme weather is happening. And above all else, what it tends to highlight is that whatever we think about climate change, whatever we think about science and whatever we think about politics, nature ultimately has its way when it comes down to an event like this. Indeed. Jonathan Sakardati there in London. Yasmin K here with me in studio. Thank you to you both.